So what is Tailwind, you probably ask yourself. I think you may have seen Tailwind already if you're in the Laravel community already, like uh, it's probably on Twitter, a lot of people tweeted about it and it's a really good framework and today I'm going to be showing you guys what Tailwind is and what's uh, the best thing to use it for and uh, what's the difference between uh, Tailwind for example and Bootstrap as you may already know. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to explain what an utility first is rather than a uh, full stack framework like uh, Bootstrap, right? So basically Bootstrap gives you a, a preset of components like uh, cards and buttons and other stuff they have and they give you the classes about it. So if you want to create a button, you just ask class btm, which is button, and then you can add a different uh, selector for the uh, colors and stuff like that, right? Now, the problem is that Tailwind doesn't give you this kind of thing. So if you want to create a button in Tailwind, you will need it to craft it yourself. Which some people may say, okay, then why do I need this framework, right? If I need to build my own components again, why do I need a, uh, a framework for that? I can just pretty much write my own CSS, right? Uh, well, here's where you're wrong. I mean, uh, this uh, framework gives you the ability to just craft any design you want without any design pattern on your mind, just using classes. You don't even need to write a single line of CSS, which is pretty good, right? I mean, you will be amazed about the performance it has and uh, how great it is to use it. So without further ado, let's see the example of all of this I'm telling you about. Uh, first thing, uh, it's actually in bold, as you can see, without encouraging any two sites to look the same. That's pretty important, uh, rather than uh, just, for example, Bootstrap, which uh, you can probably guess when you join a website, uh, though that's pretty much not customized. Uh, you can see that it looks like Bootstrap most of the times, and you say, it's not great, I mean, overused, right? Uh, the thing is that with uh, Tailwind, this is not going to happen, because you're going to craft your own style, which is great. Um, let's actually see an example of what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so Adam, which is one of the creators of the framework, uh, gave us a simple example here, which can be really great to um, see what, what 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 is Tailwind, you know, how does it work, right? So as you can see, uh, all of this is written only with the, with the framework and without any other line of CSS. So this is the result you're going to get in your code if you just copy paste this in, right? And you can pretty much customize it the way you want because it's fully crafted by yourself. Let's see what this means, right? So first thing, um, let's first review these uh, division, which is the author division of these uh, component that Adam created. So what, what he's saying here is, let's say the background, we want it to be white. And that's what makes this white color over here. Then we say, okay, let's add a margin on the horizontal axis to be auto and then it's centering it, right? Now it's setting the max uh, width of the element to be of the breakpoint small. Again, all these small and uh, uh, numbers that we're gonna see here, like six and four, I'm gonna explain what this is, but it's not pixels and it's not a, a standard measure, right? We, we can pretty much change this in the configuration of Tailwind, which is actually great. And uh, you can just uh, compile it again and these breakpoints will change automatically, right? So let's go on. Um, we are also setting a shadow to be in large. So that's what's making this little shadow over here. Again, we are making the division to be rounded in a large matter, which is making these cool borders over here. And we are setting the overflow to be hidden, which is great, right? That's the older uh, division over here. Now, inside of this division, we are creating a another division here. I'm going to go with this to uh in the end let's first focus on this tool which is our grader and uh this is setting a padding on the uh, horizontal axis of a six again this is not pixels this is not ram this is a standard measure that we added right uh, then we can add a padding on the vertical axis to be of four again it's a standard measure that we can set in the configuration file and then we see this small and this sort of like selector i'm gonna say so what this does is it's simply applying this class only if it's inside this breakpoint or it's above it right so uh, as we are in a um, um, let's say a large container or excel container uh, at the moment because we are in a full screen display uh, these two classes are going to get applied so as you can see that means that once you're in a big screen uh, 
this is going to be a flex division so it's going to be display flex and it's going to center the items right so by centering items mean it's going to center them vertically right so i'm going to show this to you later but it's all documented here on the left we're going to pretty much check it out later right again um if we are not in a small device so we are for example in an xs device it's even a smaller it's not going to be a flex division right and it's just going to apply these uh, puttings and just go on right so let's uh, go on uh, then the first thing that we see is an image here which is this one and it's uh, it, it contains different classes over here so the first we see is a block which as you may think um, a block container it takes all the space available right but at the moment as we are in a flex container this is treated as a block and uh, as you can see it have a defined height of 16 again it's a measure that you can set in the configuration and if you are above the small container it's going to be a little bit uh, higher it's in 24. again in all these places it's going to be rounded full which makes it look like a circle it's going to be centered and we're going to apply a margin on bottom of full but if we are on small devices or above we're going to see no margin at all on both right again if we're uh on a small device or above, uh, we can see that we're going to apply a margin on right of full, and we're going to apply a margin on left of zero, right? That's pretty cool. And then uh, let's go on. We just this was actually this simple image right here. And then the other side of the flex container, we're going to have a, a division with a class text center. And if we are in a small container and above, we're going to center the text on the left, which is what we see right here. And um, again, if we are in a small device, we're going to set the flex to glow, grow, I mean. And we're going to see what this means, right? But it pretty much means that it will take the remaining space, but uh, considering the initial width that the element had, right? So as you can see, the image has a predefined uh, width or height, which is pretty much the same with an image. And uh, the other space remaining in the card is going to be taken by this division, right? Because it's growing. It's growing on the space that they have available so it's pretty cool right now what watch out what happens if we are in a small device uh, i mean in a small a uh, smaller device than the uh, sm right so that means that these two classes are not going to get applied and this is going to be a block the same as the division right so let's see what happens if we are in a small device this turns out to be a block with a margin on bottom and the same for this right so you can see the breakpoints here right pretty cool um, now for the uh, last item inside this um, division of here we have a margin bottom and we have a text which is large even higher than larger and we have a leading tide on the on the um, on the font right that means it's gonna have a little bit of letter spacing and again we're gonna see uh, another text after it and uh, a button here so that's pretty cool that's a, the first button you're gonna see here it's not a class BDN right so you're gonna see you to make this sort of button work it's just saying okay the text inside of button it's gonna be really small we're gonna see the font to be semi bold you're gonna have the container to be a rounded full which makes it look like that then it says okay we're gonna have a padding on the horizontal axis to be of uh, full again with this number we're going to see what this means later and we're going to have a padding on the vertical axis of one the leading i mean the letter spacing is going to be normal and the background is going to be white you can see the background is white here now it's going to have a border which is cool and it's going to be a border of color purple again um the color palette that we are using here is the one that tailwind gives us right but we can pretty much uh, set our own colors and we can change the default values of course so it's pretty cool again the text is going to be purple and whenever we hover the element we're going to make the background be purple as well and also when we hover it the text is going to convert into white let's see it out pretty cool right you didn't even write a single line of css which is what makes this framework amazing right so what we have available here for us it's a different way to like creating your own style you can just go here you can for example cursor style we can set the cursor to auto to pointer not load it's, it's actually amazing we have this is the most powerful thing i think they have uh, all of the flexwork containers pretty amazing all the border stuff the background 
the uh, typography for fonts, uh, colors, uh, lists, everything you want, right? And also the layout, so you can, they have a predefined container, of course, um, overflows, floats, and the colors I was telling you about, this is the standard palette they have, but you can customize it, right? It's going to be much simpler than what you see here. It's pretty much going to be something like that. So you can see the black and the value that it have, and you can add your own, right? So pretty easy, right? And basically that means that uh, actually the default values for the colors are really cool. So that, that's actually great. I, I never modified them already, which is good. And then um, uh, the installation process is pretty easy. So if you have to try it out, uh, you can just go to the installation here and just uh, grab this and put it in your HTML and you're going to see an example of how it looks like. You can just test things out, right? So this is what Tailwind is. Give it a spin and if you're willing to take it out uh, for a ride, uh, just follow along with the series and I'm going to create a sample web application with a simple dashboard or a landing page. I'm just still going to decide that. And we're going to see how Tailwind performs and how easy it is to build, right? So. Without further ado, we'll see you in the next video.